Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to show you guys I released in a small little update for my monster tier list for Summer is War. Now, it's not every single monster, and I know a lot of you guys wanted a full revamp, especially since I haven't really done one after Raids was released. I've done a, I did a revamp like right before that Raids, and it completely changed the game. But as you can see, updated 8 8 16 two days ago. I started a new project. It's a small little mini project, but it should have a lot of information in a lot of way. It should really teach like some really, really important information. When you click on this original, it'll bring you to the entirety of like the history of what's been going on. And you can see there's a, bit, there's a bunch of people viewing it right now at the top. Um, down here at the bottom though, you can find more top ADs and top AO, and this is just units. And I did try to list it in order, but it might be a little bit out of order. Nobody's perfect, but I tried to keep it as close as I could, like, you know, call it fair. You know, I'm trying to call it as I see it. Then I have this old outdated patch, which is the newest patch that I rated all the monsters, and that's 2.0.3, and that was a long, long time ago. Even though it does say 2.0.3, most of this ratings, most of these numbers are from before that. I really only touched up on, like, key units on this one for like later on so a lot of this is really like a little bit outdated but it's not really a big deal and that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today I'm here to talk to you guys about my top AD list I gave 10 units that I think are the top 10 most valuable MVP units in the game right now and I tried to list them in order from statistics in the history of like what's good in G3, what's worked in G3, what's beat me in G3, what people are talking about, what people are complaining about. And I looked at other people's top 10 like units. I looked at, you know, what I usually see on Power Hour, what I see success, like gain success in Arena, what gets legend. And it's not just what gets legend, even though a really heavy weight on this guide is what's getting legend the majority of the time. And that's really what, like what I'm kind of basing this guide on for arena defense. And then I'm completely separating the entirety of it and trying to look at it at a totally different angle. Arena offense, what is causing the most amount of income of arena like score, right? What's going to cause you the highest potential income, right? Because that's what it's all about with that. AD, it's about... It's more about deterrence and income ratios. So being able to like cause some kind of like stall or deterrent power is very, very valuable as long as it still has income potential of potential success, right? So that's what this list is going to be about. You see it here at the top, Camilla, highest EHP in game. She's uncontestable. She has nearly doubled the EHP of Camilla. I mean, of Reyna. Reyna has a very, very high HP, and you can see AD examples here. Um, people use like Ariel, Juno, Chandra, like that, that's, and Camilla, like people don't, I haven't seen somebody exactly use that comp, but there are many, many, many comps that Camilla can be utilized in, and a lot of the units here mesh well, you could throw like a Sekhmet, and a Kumar, and a Praha, and a Camilla, and you know, that's a Guardian 3 AD, you just have to have the right AO, and have the right attacking mentality, and know what to do in the game. Reyna, second highest EHP. Well, you know, she doesn't. She doesn't have the second highest EHP. And you'd be like, Bomber, why are you lying to me, man? I'm not, not lying to you. She does have the second highest EHP with her passive proct in one time. She gets 20-something percent. So as long as her passive procs one time, she has more effective health points than any other unit in the game. And she heals every single time she moves no matter what. If she auto attacks, she heals herself. If she heals herself with second ability, then she heals herself. So she's always putting her effective health higher at the current time. Like every time she moves and every time she gets a crit, she gets more free effective HP. And that's why she's gotten legend so many times and that's why she's so prevalent in the Guardian 3 arena. Same thing as Ariel, best water HP lead, and that's really what it is. Like That's pretty much the most important part, is that she's the best water HP lead. That's why it's so prevalent, is it gives you 50% water HP lead to modify the highest EHP units in the game. If the two best units in the game are water, and then you, this third best unit in the game is going to be something that multiplies those water HP units to be even better than they normally are. 
fourth unit in the game is new and controversial, and I don't even know for myself if it should, if it's deserving of being on the fourth place, but it has gotten legend, and it is pretty scary to attack myself. I feel like if it's on will ruins, it's kind of scary, but if it's not, it's really easy to beat for me. But when it's on will, it is crazy. Like it's very, very hard to deal with for me. I don't have Tiana. I do. I do run Zeros and Leo against it, and I typically win the main majority of the time, 85 to 90 percent of the time. It's a pretty fast clear. I don't struggle with it, but I think I have the power units to deal with it. It's kind of like the uh, Sierra Camilla dynamic, where like Camilla is overpowered, but Sierra quickly dispatches and hard counters Camilla. You know, so it's easy for the Sierra player to say, hey, Camilla's easy to beat, she's balanced, right? It's easy for me to say, with Leo and Zeros, hey, Water Fairy King's really easy for me to beat. I don't really struggle with it because, you know, I have a really fast Bernard, I have Leo and Zeros, I can just cool it down and completely counter the 33% speed and all that, right? So, potential AD, AD examples are here. I mean, I mean I'm not going to go over them all, but you guys can check this out. It's a really, really cool thing to see. Like, I, I try and take out what people are running, and I'm just looking at, like, what's really successful, what I've lost to, what I've seen do really well. Molly, Praha. Obviously, these two go hand-in-hand in hand together. When you look at this, if you see this, Molly and Praha are typically in a team together, so I want to put them really close together because most players that are running Molly are also running Praha, and that's because if if you take AoE damage and one hit glances, like let's say from a Lucian or something, your whole team can live, right? But it needs to be AoE brought back to life. So if something, if you're afraid of being AoE down, Molly is pretty good at stopping some AoE damage on some key units, and then Pra is really good at bringing them all back to full. Also causing like offensive um, dispelling options and AoE CC. So you mix that with like AoE damage and maybe assassination protection. So you, they can't just like, that's why I've, I'm showing Huadam in this comp with the uh, Molly. Why it's there is, I mean, look at it. Are you gonna like a this? No, you're probably not gonna like a this, right? So, cause you gotta clear the hot amp first, right? So it's a little bit harder, and then you got the fire offensive damage, and then, you know, you just got a whole decent kit right there. It's pretty stally, it doesn't really have too much threat outside the fire threat, which is pretty easy, to easily dispatched if you have um, Alicia. But moving on to Kumar, Ariel, Rena, Kumar, Praha, Compositions like this have been like legend multiple times. Aerial Arena, Kumar, and like Chandra is like that's like a a legend defense. That's the legend defense in the makings. Like anything that's just like three wind unit or three water units with an aerial and arena, another water unit, and then a Kumar to protect your water units from the wind units that are, they're gonna have to bring to answer your three is pretty good. It's a pretty good defense. You could probably get legend with this defense. All these defenses you could probably get legend with, to be honest. As long as you are on the right day, it's you know woke up on the right side of the bed that day, and your your AO is on point. You know, Juno. I have to put Juno up here. If Praha is going to be up here, Juno is like really, really closely related, especially because of the way she counters like the bomb teams right now. Like, if you put a defense break up with Galleon and you bomb them and it stuns them, it's a defense break and a stun, it's two debuffs, she's going to she's gonna proc out of it with her nemesis if you don't kill her right away. Um, then she's going to heal herself and her whole team, and she's going to try and stun your whole team and remove all your, your buffs. I've seen her solo my teams multiple times just by herself. She is one of the, one of the scarier units on this list, that's for sure. Um, or scarier units in the game. She's probably she's she's not the scariest unit on the list, but she's definitely the most underrated unit on this list, hands down. The most underrated unit on this list. Pretty much everything I've covered so far is like you know on the most wanted list for pretty much everybody in the game. Juno is probably on the most hated list, on, to be honest, for most players in the game. But what you don't really see is end game Junos. They are very very scary. Sekhmet coming in ninth place. I think that Sekhmet's one step behind Juno because you don't actually need Sekhmet. And a lot of the times I actually see Sekhmet derp 
or just do nothing and I just get kind of like a free win against that. But besides the point, it, I think segment also requires you to have like some kind of really, really good like modifier units, something like Molly and Kumar for like some AoE pressure and then you need a really, really strong fire or water tank. So you have like a full stall Camilla with a segment and a Kumar and then whatever else in there as well as your as your third unit could be like even Juno. So like three fire units and that strong water unit to tank and that means that they, they'll have to bring in water DPS but no water DPS in this game is really good against Camilla. Bringing a Sierra against that kind of a comp would be pretty hard and honestly I might just change this right now because this comp is probably better off with a Juno in it. And it so might sound weird to you, three fire units and a water unit, but it's about that counter element synergy that completely throws people off. It's like you can't really bring Sierra to that. and it, it, You can, but it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. You're, it's going to be a very difficult AD, and your success rate isn't going to be that high. And then coming in last place, but definitely not weak at all is Vela Jewel. I've after his AI changes I have to throw him up here I've seen him buff like five times in a row I attacked him five times in a row seen him buff five times in a row I actually only seen him one time not buff so far since his since his AI change and that's without debuffs either he's he's pretty ridiculous right now problems with him are that he gets AOE cleaved so units like Molly and Diaz are almost like are very very important because the thing is is that people Lucian Bellagel so hard he's a defense based damage dealer he's a defense based unit people build him HP but he still dies to Lucians he's not he doesn't like stun or stop Lucians in any way shape or form he doesn't put you know X a shield up or like an anti crit buff or he doesn't put out AOE CC or AOE damage, AOE threat to these Lucian's lives. He doesn't really put that much single target damage out if you build him HP. And if you build him defense, then he dies to the armor ignore from Lucian's. So he's very Lucianable despite him being a fire unit. I, have, I look for him in power hour a lot and try to Lucian him. Um, but the thing is, is with the correct comp, you can stop him from being Lucian. Something like an AOE damage reducer like Diaz and something like an AOE... Uh, RNG unit like Molly, and then an AoE healer like Praha, something like an AoE stunner like Praha as well to stop the Lucians from having power buff and defense buff on them at all times and speed buff on them at all times. So like a Bernard Megan double Lucian comp. This comp does really, really well on just all over the place in Guardian 3 Arena. Very good unit. Over on to AO. I want to wrap this up really quick because AO, in my opinion, is pretty boring. And it's pretty much all Tiana when it comes down to it. Tiana, hands down, has no counterplay. It's just plain and simple. She is probably, in my opinion, the most overpowered unit in the game. Just by just numbers. Like I, I'm more like a numbers guy. When I look at something, what gives you the most of X or the most of this or the most of that? What gives you the most amount of potential income in the entire game is probably Tiana. Like that, that's my opinion. I, I still think that Camilla is very overpowered. I think she's probably the most overpowered unit in the game. But when it comes down to counterplay and and arena income, I think that Tiana surpasses Camilla when it comes down to just what it, what it does. One will ruin on an AD could make my AOs two times longer. You put a will ruin on your Diaz, and I, I might have to take, you know, a minute to clear you now. But normally, if that you didn't have that, I would take 15 to 30 seconds, right? Sometimes even with Arena, like, I might not get that defense break because the will at the beginning, so I clear everything except the Arena, and I'm stuck on Arena for a while, right? Tiana just stops that. No shield runes can be used. No will runes can be used. It's not like Orion where there's counterplay. You can run shield and will and counterplay the dispel of one buff, right? It's an AoE dispelling for your, yourself. You can't offensively dispel either because you actually have to hit multiple units. You need to hit Tiana to, off, to play an offensive dispel comp. You need to hit Tiana and you have to hit one of the other multiplier units like the Galleon or the DPS units, right? So even if that goes down, you know, 
you have to hit the Tiana. If you hit all three of the other units and you don't hit Tiana, then Tiana dispels the whole team and moves on. So it's the least counterplayable unit in the game as well. There's just nothing that really works well against it. As long as you're running swift on it and you're utilizing it correctly, there's no unit in the game that's like, hey, I'm a Leo and I can cool you down. That'd be cool to see. It'd be nice to see like units maybe. I wouldn't want to see a five star because then it'd be coming back to the Sierra Camilla dynamic where the only reason Camilla probably isn't the most overpowered unit in the game in my opinion right now for total score at the end of the night is probably because they buffed Sierra a long time ago and made her so she can just pop Camilla's pretty easily now. Um, moving on to that, I mean, you look through this and it's pretty boring. Tiana, 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 no Tiana, 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 no Tiana, 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 Tiana. You can basically sense a trend here. Like when I'm looking at like best in slot units, if I'm going to pick something that's best for most amount of score at the end of the night for power hour, for arena, for, for summer or sky arena ranking, right? Tiana is definitely the role you want to go with. No, there's 13 unit or 13 slots here, but the first one is just this. There is 12 units on this list. I could not leave out Segan Tosi because they just are so good in general. Not having any weaknesses, always being neutral to everything or positive to everything is just a big advantage in arena. Being able to bring your best set onto Seeger Tosi, best DPS set onto these units is just such a very, very convenient thing in the game right now. Having Seeger Tosi is definitely a good, really, really good advantage. But there are units that nuke better, like Amir. Highest AoE nuke in the game. He has the most modifier in the game, and it actually becomes ridiculously high the more debuffs. Gauge reduction is overpowered, period. I just can't say it enough. If you are AoE damaging and you have gauge reduction at the same time, that's hella fucking strong. It's ridiculous. What's better than that? You add multi-hits to it, boom. You get a Charlotte, I mean, like Charlotte Poseidon, obviously right next to each other. They're pretty much the same rank. Same thing as Seagan Tosi. They're pretty much the same rank. Really, in my, in my mind, those two units are just, you, you know, you can't really contend with it. Second best unit, I gotta go back up all the way up here. Sierra, Zero, Solution, Leavely. Obviously, it means, like, I don't even need to go over them. AoE cooldown reset, AoE armor ignore, AoE bomb detonation, AoE bombs from Leavely. Like, it doesn't, bombs just don't crit. They don't have to, like, they don't proc, like, you know, Camilla's passive. They don't proc Reina's passive. They don't have to, you know go through some glancing check, it just does damage, period, you know, it just goes against your resistance, and period, it just, I mean, like, I run a resistance comp, 100% resistance on almost everything on my entire defense, and I still get bombed every single time, so I, it really comes down to what is their counterplay, and is the counterplay working, the counterplay isn't working against bombers, obviously, there's, you know, I mean, there's, you can't run resistance against bombers, if that's not the counterplay to bombers, then the it's going to be at the top of the list. That's why they're way up here. Um, obviously, if you don't have cooldowns, it's really strong. And obviously, if you want to run defense, well, defense on your AD, well, then Lucian's going to be strong as well. That's why I was talking about, I was always looking for Velojules, trying to find units that I could Lucian. Because if you can Lucian somebody, it's really fast, really easy, and it's really secure. You know, you one hit, kill them, and it's a good game. You move on to the next. Galleon, obviously, I mean, look, come on. How many times is Galleon in here? He's literally in every single comp that Sierra's in. I mean, Tiana's in. Every single time Tiana's listed, Galleon's listed as well. And I think if Galleon wasn't counterable, he would probably be higher on the list. Because he is counterable through resistance and through will runs and through units that can't be armor ignored or, you know. There's, there's a lot of different counters to Galleon. And the thing is, just like if you don't have Tiana, then Galleon's weaker than he is. If you have Tiana, then Galleon's way stronger. So I have to put him down lower on the list just because he only is kind of overpowered when Tiana is on the same team. But when you look at it realistically, Tiana and Galleon are pretty much on every single team here except the Lucian teams. Um, Leo, I use Leo and Galleon often. Actually, I would love to use like Bernard. Uh, or I would love to use like Tiana instead of Bernard. I would love to put my Bernard runes on Tiana and use this exact team, except right here, this AO example, where it is Bernard, Seek, Leo, Lucian. I would like to do uh, Tiana, Seek, Leo, Lucian, or Tiana, 
Megan, Leo Lucian, and that would be that'd be so such a nice comp, or run Tiana Galleon, Leo and like Zeros, and that kind of a comp would totally counter these Water Fairy King defenses that are going on. And that's what I said earlier is when I was going over the defenses. The Water Fairy King with Will Runes gives me trouble because I can't get rid of the Will because I don't have Tiana. And when I'm running, like, Aquila or if I'm running Praha, the Dispel, I honestly, with 100% accuracy on Aquila, the Dispel misses 50%. Like, I, I've looked at it time and time again. I watched my own footage time and time again. I, I typically miss 25 to 50% of my Dispels. And that just can't, that, that can't happen. 25 to 50% of your dispels being missed is two times longer AO. Period. You miss, like I said earlier, one will run. Sometimes is two to four times longer of an AO. So not having Tiana is sometimes two to four times less income on points at the end of the night when it comes down to it from your AO. Also, you might lose your, your AO. I actually lose a lot of my AOs because my dispels don't go off. That's typically... Probably my number one reason of losing, or my dispels don't go off. One unit like kills one one of my units because I wasn't able to kill it, and then I kill it finally, but I'm one unit down, and then a Camilla solos my whole team. That's typically like the play by play when I'm gonna be losing an AO. But that's pretty much everything. I ran down like all of my units. I had 22 units here that I ran down that I think are probably the top units in the game. And honestly, I would like to see all of these units get addressed sometime within the next year. Like, that's really my goal. Is I hope that Come to Us realizes that, like, the game really is all about these units. And it's very, very, very boring to see the game being about all these units and nobody else. Like, there are other units that didn't make it under my list. There's a few that are up there, but I, honestly... Really like to see these one, these ones in particular get addressed. See what happens if, if they could do something. You know, remove four percent damage here, remove eight percent damage there. Try new things. Try to look at your number one units, change them up a little bit. You know, maybe apply a resistance check to Tiana, or maybe it only removes one buff and one debuff instead of just removing everything. So then maybe you can run shield as a counterplay to Tiana. Create some counterplays here or there, and it would be a much better, healthier game for everybody because really like. Nobody really looks forward to Arena anymore on Sunday night. Unless you are like, you don't know what you're doing and you're excited. You just got a new unit. I guess the competitive players like myself, I don't really look forward to Arena anymore because the game's all about these units. And really, if you don't have them, you are at a, you're at a much lower chance of success. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I appreciate you guys coming on here watching 23 minutes of this video. But... It does mean a lot to me. I'm always streaming over on Twitch. Come and check it out. You guys would have known about this already for a while because I was doing it kind of live on Twitch. But come on over to twitch.tv slash omgbomber. You can find a link to this this uh, guide here, this monster rating guide, in the description below. You can find my Twitch and a whole bunch of other my social medias below. Hit that sub button if you think I earned it. I work really hard for summer as well, and I do a lot of work. Even if I'm not having as much fun as I used to, I still do a lot when it comes down to the summer resort. I still love you guys and I hope you guys give it give that show that love back to me. So I appreciate it. Have a good one. Peace.